I recently attended a performance of the play 1776, which chronicles the events leading up to the adoption of the Declaration of Independence by the Second Continental Congress 231 years ago this month in Philadelphia. Now, in that play, the delegates often talk about the heat. Not surprising given the time of year, but I wondered, is that the stuff of legend or was it really that hot? Now, there was no organized weather observing in 1776. All we have are notes from various individuals. The most complete data comes from a Mr. Phineas Pemberton from a prominent Philadelphia family. He observed temperature, wind, and weather each day around 7 a.m. and 3 p.m. Now, based on his observations, the averages for June 1776 were 66 at 7 a.m. and 74 at 3 p.m. Now, compare those to the average low and high in Philadelphia today. 64 on the low side, 81 on the high side. Now, 7 a.m. in May in colonial times was about two hours after sunrise, and so typically the temperature would already be going up from the morning low. So 66 at 7 a.m. seems about average for June. Now, 3 p.m. is a, about an hour or two before the day's high usually occurs, so it's reasonable that Pemberton's 3 p.m. numbers would be lower than the modern-day average high, but 7 degrees is a lot. Bottom line? June 1776 just doesn't seem all that hot to me, at least not by today's standards. Starting on July 1st, 1776, we also have temperature observations from none other than Thomas Jefferson himself, usually three or four per day, often around 9 a.m., 1 p.m., and 9 p.m. If we combine Pemberton's and Jefferson's data, we can get a good idea of the weather in the days leading up to that original Independence Day. July 1st uh, started foggy, but the sun came out and south winds sent temperatures into the 80s most of the day. Pemberton actually recorded a thunder shower at 5 p.m. To me, this looks like a typical humid summer day in Philadelphia. July 2nd, 1776 was a good day to stay inside. Pemberton wrote, much rain this forenoon. Wind shifted from southwest in the morning to northwest by 4 p.m. and skies cleared as well. That is a classic description of a cold front going through. Wind stayed northwesterly on July 3rd, 1776, a partly sunny and windy day with highs in the mid-70s. That sounds like a typical day behind a cold front in summer, even a bit on the cool side. In fact, the temperature had dropped to 64 by 7 a.m. on that historic morning of July 4th, 1776. By that historic afternoon, winds had come around to the southwest, temperatures had risen into the mid-70s, and skies had clouded up. That's the kind of weather sequence associated with warm air trying to return. At least based on the available data, that first Independence Day doesn't seem all that hot to me. I'd like to thank the American Philosophical Society in Philadelphia for their help in finding the data for this weather-wise. The APS is the nation's oldest learned society founded by Ben Franklin in 1743. Fred Godomsky will be back with the extended forecast next.